Hello everyone, welcome back to another exciting tutorial. Today we're going to see how to install Apache Superset on Windows with the help of WSL and Docker. This is because Apache Superset can't actually be installed directly on Windows. In a previous tutorial, I showed you how to install Apache Superset without Docker. If you go to my website and just search for Superset, you'll find a tutorial on installing it without Docker. Today, we'll see how to install Apache Superset on Windows using WSL and Docker. So let's get started. First, we have to turn on a feature in the control panel, which is the WSL feature. I'm just quickly showing you. Go to control panel, go to program and features, click on the turn Windows feature on or off, scroll down, and activate the Windows subsystem for Linux. Next, we need to go to the Microsoft Store and install a version of Ubuntu. You can install Ubuntu 24 or 22, either version will work. For this tutorial, I'm going to choose Ubuntu 22.04, the LTS version. So let's install this version. So our installation is completed now. Let's open the terminal. I'm setting my username here. Next, I need to set a password too. Here, one important thing to note is that by default, the root user has no password. It's better practice to set a password for the root user. To do this, run the command sudo su, which means switch user. It will ask for your current user's password. After entering the password, you will see that you are logged in as the root user. At this point, you can just run the cd command to go to the home folder. By the way, this is optional, so you can skip it if you want. Now it is time to set the password for the root user. The command for this is P-A-S-S-W-D, kinda short form of password. It will ask for a new password for the root user. This password will be our root user password. So I'm going to set a new password now. And that's it, a new password for our root user has been set. Let's now return to the normal user mode. To do this, we need to run su and the username. Then we can run the cd command to go to the user's home folder. For today's tutorial, I'm not going to use the default Windows terminal. Instead, I'm going to use the warp AI terminal. At this point of this tutorial, let me show you how to access the file system of the Ubuntu we just installed from within Windows. For this, you need to open the Windows File Explorer. On the left bottom side, you will see an option named Linux. If you click here, you will see your installed WSL distros. I already have a few distros installed. so it's showing multiple. Now you might be thinking how do I know which one we just installed. For that we need to run another command which is wsl-l-v. Here you can see I have three WSL distros installed and among these three we just installed this one. So how do I know? Because I renamed the other two distros earlier. If for some reason you don't see the Linux option in your file explorer, don't worry, I have mentioned another option on my blog post. Just go to the file explorer address bar, then type backslash backslash WSL and the dollar sign. And if you now press enter, you will see all the WSL distros are shown here as well. For now, I don't need the file explorer, so I'm going to minimize it. Next, we need to install the Docker desktop. You can download it from their official website using the link on my blog post. Or you can install it from Microsoft Store. I'm currently installing it from the Microsoft Store. Docker desktop installation is complete. Now we need to open it. I'm going to log in into Docker Desktop using my Google account. When you first launch it, a screen like this will appear. 
there's nothing to do here for now but for those who have low storage space on their c drive i'm going to show you an important tip and tricks so go to the setting then click on the resources here you will find an option called disk image location this means docker desktop will save its data files here right now it's on the c drive if you have low space on your c drive i would recommend changing it to another drive to show you i'm placing it in the f drive users user app data local docker wsl folder after selecting the location you have to click on the apply and restart button as a result all the data created by the docker desktop will now be saved in your new selected location which will save the storage space of your c drive okay before clicking on the apply and restart button i'm doing one more thing that all of you must do you need to go to the WSL integration under the resources in the Docker desktop setting. Here you can see all the WSL distros are listed here. Since I have several WSL distros which I showed you earlier with the WSL-L-V command, now I have to specify which one I want to use. If you only have one, it will be selected by default, otherwise you need to select it manually. Since I want to work with this Ubuntu 22.04 distro, all the steps are also mentioned in my blog post. Okay, so I'm going to click on the apply and restart button. It will take a moment to restart the Docker desktop. That's all for Docker desktop now. So the Docker desktop started again and we have no further work here for now. Now let's go and see the status of the folder location that we set up earlier. We have selected the F users, user, app, data, local, Docker, WSL folder inside the F drive. Look at the size. It's already about 1.44 GB. Remember this because as we use it, the size of this folder will increase. That's why moving it from the C drive to another drive is important. We'll check the size of this folder again at the end of our tutorial. Next, we need to run the Ubuntu terminal. You can open it by searching for Ubuntu in the start menu or you can use the Windows terminal or you can use the warp AI terminal which I'm using for this tutorial because it can suggest command on its own by studying the user's previous command or the user's behavior. To enter on our specific distro, we need to type wsl-d and the followed by the distro name. Here dash d means distro and the next part is the name of the distro you want to access. Here you can see the warp AI terminal is already suggesting it to me on its own. Basically that's why I like the warp AI terminal. If you want to use windows terminal you can type the same command and just press enter. So all these are same. Now we can access the Ubuntu distro. If you are using warp AI terminal at this point you should activate the warpify for convenience. Now if you run ls command, you won't see any output. But if you use the ls-a command, you'll see all the hidden files are shown now. I can quickly show you the Ubuntu distros folder from the Windows Explorer so you can understand exactly which location we are currently in. To understand which location I am in from the terminal, we can run another command which is called pwd or the full form is print working directory. You'll see it's print the current directory as output which is slash home slash sub which is our username. We can see the same location in the file explorer too. To make it a bit easier for you to understand, I'm going to create a folder here and we can create a folder here by running mkdir and the followed by the folder name you'll see the folder hello is already appeared in my file explorer 2 
So now you understand exactly which folder we are accessing in the Ubuntu distro from the terminal. I could have actually skipped this entire part of this tutorial, but I showed you to make it easier for the beginner to understand. Now we need to see if this terminal has access to Docker desktop. If I now run docker-v as in version, look, it's showing the Docker version, just like the screenshot on my website. This means Docker has been successfully integrated into this WSL distro. Here I'm clearing the warp A terminal by pressing Ctrl, Shift and K, which would be the clear command in the default Windows terminal. If you are using from the default Windows terminal, you can just run clear. If you get stuck on any of the previous steps, you will have to repeat from step 5. I am starting from the next step here. The next step on my website was to learn about the current location with the ls-a command which we have already done. Now we have come to this step 11 from where we can actually clone the Apache superset from GitHub for the first time. I am going to copy the command from my website and I'm going to paste the command into my terminal. Here, dash dash depth equal to one argument means shallow clone. If you use this command, I mean the shallow clone, it will only clone the latest commit from the GitHub. If you don't use this argument, it will download the entire Git history of the superset repository, which will take a lot of time and space on your hard drive. Let me run the command with the shallow clone. Here, the cloning is finished. If I now run the ls command, you will see two directories named hello and the superset. To confirm, I will show it once more from the Windows Explorer. Look inside my home and subdirectory. The superset directory is also visible from my Windows Explorer too. Let's go to the next step. We now need to navigate to the superset directory. To navigate to the superset directory, we need to run cd superset. The warp AI terminal is already helping me. So the full name appeared in this suggestion before I finished typing the command. Pressing the right arrow will complete my command. I'm now inside the superset directory. Our next task is to launch Apache superset using Docker. For this, we need to run this command, which will build the necessary Docker images for Superset. For your convenience, I will place my Docker desktop and Warp AI terminal side by side. Here, I'm going to copy the command and pasting it to the terminal. And as soon as I run the command, you'll see that it started building the Docker images. You can see this process in the images tab of the Docker desktop. Once the build is complete, it will automatically start running them in the container tab. These steps might take more than 10 minutes depending on your PC's configuration. At this moment, we have nothing to do but wait. So all my images have finished building and if you go to the containers tab from the Docker desktop, you will see the containers are setting up one by one. We need to wait for the container named Superset app to run. Here you can see our server is running. If you look at the Docker desktop, you'll see the Superset app is also running now. I think the process in the terminal is now 100% complete. Now we can launch the Superset application by going to the address localhost 8088. By default, the username and password for Superset will be admin and admin. Let's sign in and look, my superset has been successfully installed. Not only it is installed, but the default dashboard and chart have also appeared. You can now view data from any dashboard and create your own chart. A fun fact about the new version of Superset is that they have finally added the dark and light theme. Since my system is in dark theme, it is automatically showing the dark mode. Let me show you the folder that we have configured for the Docker desktop. Let's go to the location. 
and here you can see it is now almost 15 GB where it was 1.44 GB when we first set it up. That's why I changed the location at the beginning of this tutorial because it takes up a lot of space over time. So in today's tutorial, we have learned how we can install and run Apache Superset through WSL and Docker. So thank you for staying with me for this long and good night.